All right, and we are rolling. Yeah, that's right. Uh, PhillyInfluencer.com. I'm your man, Sean Brace. Thank you for tuning in again. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, lots to get into. Um, I want to touch up a little bit on some stuff that happened yesterday, including a huge union victory at PPL Park last night. That's right. 3-0, Philadelphia Union. How about that? Hey, man, the Phillies are going to stink all damn summer. And uh, it's a good time at PPL Park. So if you're looking for an opportunity, looking for a reason to get up there, you know, they've been able to put together a couple victories in these uh, past couple weeks over some really good teams. So right now, the Union uh, playing some good soccer. And we had a ton of fun yesterday, like I said um, on the podcast yesterday, that Neshaminy Creek got parted with those guys as far as tailgating is concerned. And we had a great time yesterday. So shout out to the boys over there at Neshaminy Creek. They're busy this week with Philly Beer Week. Um, so yeah, Philadelphia Union, big game coming up on Saturday. I will be at a private beach. Looking forward to that. Unfortunately, I won't be here. How about that shit? I'm pissed off because... Let me turn my headphones up. Jesus, what the hell's going on here? Who's playing with my devices? I'm learning them here. Headphones. Headphones. There it is. Hello. Hello. All right, much better. And for the people that ask why I wear headphones, it's because we also podcast as well. A little bit of uh, SoundCloud action. Tweet out those links. I'm trying to get it hooked up to iTunes for the people that are at work and, you know, maybe want to, uh, you know, they, they lose a couple brain cells during your lunchtime. You pop into head buds and or ear buds and just listen on iTunes. Looking forward to getting that done. But um, where the hell was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. How about Saturday? How about Saturday? You want to talk about some crazy shit going down Saturday? And I'm going to the beach, so I'm not trying to complain. However, I am going to complain just a little bit. You got the Belmont, right? Got the Belmont. Got the Triple Crown. Probably going to happen. American Pharaoh. I got to be in front of the TV for that. But again, you never know what's going to happen. You think my girl wants to hear, hey, we got to leave the beach to go to a bar to go watch American Pharaoh go win the Triple Crown. But, she, you know, she's a good soldier, so hopefully she'll be down with that. But still, that's not all. How about Barcelona and Juventus in the Champions League final? Ah, but I'll be at the beach. What can you do? What else we got going on? Oh, the Union are playing at night, and uh, like I was talking about in the Chamonix Creek, they got their anniversary party where Andrew W.K., the hell is he, what did he sing? Let's, uh, let's party, let's get fucked up, something like that. He's going to be at the uh, brewery, so if you're looking for something to do up there in that area, go on over to Croydon area, that's right, go on over to uh, the Chamonix Creek and tell the boys I sent you, they'll take great care of you. They said a ton of people requested on Facebook, so it's going to be a packed house. So get on out there and support that brewery. Uh, they make great, great, tasty beverages, that's for sure. All right, so we covered the union. I talked a little bit about uh, myself this weekend. Make sure everybody has a good weekend as well. Hopefully everybody's having a great summer already. Uh, but let's get into the nooks and crannies here of what, everything that's gone down in the last 24 hours. That's what I like to do. We'll kick things off with uh, a little bit of an update from yesterday. Andre Godala, that article that came out. Uh, Sarah E. Todd on the Philadelphia, well, from what I thought it was the Philadelphia Inquirer, I should have just put two and two together. What it is is the Inquirer paid somebody over there in the Bay Area that covers that team to go ahead and do an article, I guess. That's my thoughts. Um, and Sarah E. Todd stepped up to the challenge. I thought that the article was good. It's just that when it got to the point of uh, Andre Godal was walking down the street and Sixer fans were cursing at him, I called bullshit on that, all right? And, and, and like, I was going back and forth to a number of people on Twitter. Sure, it might have happened one time. Might have happened one time. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't even think it happened one time. But whatever. And then that's what you want to go out there to, uh, you know, muster up that enthusiasm for everybody else out there in the country to hate on Philadelphia sports fans because we we eat our childs you know we eat our young here it's so nasty to play in Philadelphia well that's what Iguodala wanted to perpetuate you know and, and and make you think and he had to mention that in the article so whatever uh, I she was like you're more than welcome to call BS but he did use details like I said I reached out to her on Twitter and I still will call BS Sarah, but uh, thank you very much for going back and forth with me on Twitter. Her name is at NBA Sarah, a little redhead. Yeah. yeah, she writes good articles, though. I did read a couple of other things, too. Speaking of Andre Iguodala, one of the reasons why I feel like Iguodala held a grudge against us was because he never felt like he got the love that AI, that's right, the original AI got, Alan Iverson. And uh, it's unfortunate that we have to bring this up. Uh, but it is in Allen Iverson's past, as I'm about to pull this article up, because it is ugly. Yeah, that's right. Kent Babb, he's a Washington Post sports writer. 
Uh, he came out with a biography uh, about Allen Iverson. And my goodness, some of the things, some of the details that are written in this biography are nasty. Yeah, we knew Allen Iverson wasn't a good dude. We kind of had that idea. But when you read things, cer certain things like this that are in this book, Iverson once threatened his wife, Tawana, uh, that he would pay a man $5,000 to have her killed. Yuck. Uh, Iverson also said that, or Iverson also told Tawana that he would pay someone a million dollars to testify in divorce court that they had an affair with her. Uh, side note is price scale for D strikes me, poorly thought out, whatever that means. And uh, some other things, but this was probably the worst one. Tawana has also accused Allen of numerous instances of spousal abuse, including stepping on her bare foot and grinding his boot heel into it. Uh, and punching her in the back while laughing out loud, that's a kidney shot, he told her. Yeah, um, this is this is this is a tough one because this is AI, man. This is this is the dude that took the baton from NJ for me and made NBA basketball interesting again because obviously the Sixers stunk for a number of years before AI came into the league. But he grabbed that baton and and uh, he got me. I was reeled into the Allen Iverson world, uh, but this this sucks. This definitely sucks. We knew Allen Iverson was not a good dude. Uh, back in those days, but some of the things that are just listed here make you really think like, damn, you know, I rocked this jersey, I supported that dude, I bought those shoes, I had his back. He was a terrible, terrible human being, uh, but hopefully he's doing better right now. Uh, I don't even know what's the deal with Tawana. I believe they got divorced, correct? They went through all that shit uh, a couple years ago, and, uh, you know, just hopefully the kids are good. The opportunity I had to, to meet Allen when his jersey was retired last year. I went to a Mitchell and Ness function. I thought he was a good dude. He came around, shook everybody's hand. He loved the moment. But um, obviously, when we go back in time, my man was full of himself, and he thought he was on top of the world, and nobody could stop him. And when you lay your hands on a female, uh, even before it was cool to be up against this with Ray Rice, this is just nasty. It's despicable. And it makes you really think less of Allen Iverson. A lot of you people didn't really think that highly of him to begin with. I was one of the guys that kind of just put it in the back of the head and say, hey, you know, he was a warrior on the court, but fuck that with all this bullshit. Makes you really, really... It stinks. It stinks. Um, and I will read the book, uh, but it's going to pay me to do so, that's for sure. Iverson coming up. We had to get that out there. But uh, back to Andre Iguodala, who is starting, or not, excuse me, not starting, but he plays uh, for the Golden State Warriors. And my goodness! Game one tonight, NBA Finals. How long, how long have we waited for this to finally get here? And I put out there in the afternoon tug on phillyinfluencer.com that I feel like this series, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, will deliver. It, I just, I can't see how this series doesn't go to six games, all right? Even if it's a, let's back it up, even if it's a five-game series, right? You're telling me there's going to be blowouts? I don't see blowouts. When you got LeBron James on the other side and he's the quote-unquote underdog, and he did not like that question yesterday, but he is. He's almost 2-1, to one, I believe. Uh, Six-point underdog today? I want to say that's correct. I didn't look at the updated lines. Let me pull that up right now. But, uh, you know, I just don't see how a blowout will happen. Now, as we say that, it's five and a half. As I say that right now, who knows? how this will play out. We like to all believe that we got the Magic 8 ball and we're going to predict the future, but I just see this series going six, living up to the hype, and I got to go with the Warriors. I tried like hell to convince myself that the Cavs would deliver, that LeBron James got the eye of the Tiger again. There's no way he's going to lose this, but just break it down um, and, and just go, all right, so you got LeBron James and the Warriors are so deep that they're going to throw body after body after body. Green, Iggy, Barnes, etc. They're going to continue to throw guys at LeBron James. And it's not like LeBron has never been stopped before or contained, excuse me, all of San Antonio Spurs. So, uh, I mean, he's a great player. He's unstoppable when he wants to get to the basket. But throughout the course of a game, 48 minutes, no, he's not untouchable. So I just feel like the Golden State Warriors are going to have too much for them. That's a damn good squad, too. Let's not sleep on the Golden State Warriors. They are a, an amazing team. I mean, historically speaking, some of the numbers that they were putting up this year. Steph Curry, you know how he is. He doesn't miss. Klay Thompson, I'm waiting to see what happens with all his concussions. Um, you know, is he going to have any side effects or anything like that? Or is that just behind him? He's going to be all right. I mean, after all, damn, he's bleeding from the year. That's disgusting. So... 
Uh, hopefully he's 100%. Hopefully Kyrie Irving is 100%, but I just don't see how that's going to happen. And if Kyrie Irving isn't 100%, who's he guarding? All right? Who's he guarding? If he's not 100%, you think he's going to hang with Clay? You think he's going to hang with, with Steph? I'm not seeing it. So my prediction, Warriors in six. But I will say this. GodfireLocks.com, rolling hot right now. This is his time to shine. Last 48 hours, 11-2 uh, and two on the Major League Baseball diamond. That's not even counting hoops, all right? This is his world. This is his forte. They started up about five years ago. It was, I believe it was five years ago, and it was the Dallas Mavericks uh, Miami Heat Series. And that's right, Godfather Locks came out and said, nope, the Mavs are going to pull this one out. Boom. Next thing you know, the Mavs did. Following year, same thing. Just stayed hot. Created GodfatherLocks.com. I've been with those guys for a number of years. They support the podcast. They're going to sponsor it. We're going to do some stuff in the future. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. Trust me. My man knows hoops. This is his time to shine, and he's on a hot streak right now. With all handicappers, you hop on them when they're hot. 11 and 2 last 48 hours, crushing it. So check him out before you make a play tonight. GodfatherLocks.com. Tell him Sean Brace sent you. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, so we covered NBA Finals, we covered Iguodala, we covered Iverson, unfortunately. Let me squeeze some Eagles talk before we get out of the Philadelphia world here. Uh, let's read it together, all right? Well, let's do that. Philly.com and Marcus Hayes, God bless him, but he's always taken the other side. Always. Always, 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 always got the contrarian view. And, you know, it's what you got to do. It's what you got to do at times. But my man is trying to make the pitch that Cooper is better than we think. And when I say Cooper, I'm talking about Riley Cooper. All right, let's read this together, okay? Every lost season needs its prize. Every prize needs a defender. Fairly or not, the scapegoated Eagles of 2014 forever will be cornerback Bradley Fletcher and receiver Riley Cooper. Uh, Fletcher's knack for getting burned prompted the Eagles to cut ties with him through the Super Bowl champion Patriots. Him. Cooper, however, will return to veteran presence on a wet year receiving corpse for better or worse. Cooper's breakout 2013 season raised expectations and got him a big raise, but his remarkable, unremarkable, excuse me, 2014 season brought into question his presence on Chip Kelly's ever fluid roster. Uh, I wanted to read it with you, but it's just it's just bullshit. I mean. Dude, how could you sit there and tell me that Riley Cooper is better than we think? Again, my man dropped passes that were in his hands last year. If you remember, the Indianapolis Colts game had a touchdown right in his hands. He dropped it. Okay? How about the, the New Orleans Saints game, the playoff game, when my man came, comes across the middle on third down and long, and the ball hits him right in the hands, and if he catches that ball, chances are he's going to take that ball 40 yards. He might have brought it to the house, and it would score a touchdown. Again, it's just a drop. He did have a good season, but this is what happens when you start to depend on players like that that are just, I mean, he's not good. He's just not a good football player. That's it. Not a good receiver. You know, he would have been cut if I was the head coach after what happened at that damn country concert, all right? I would have cut his ass, and the Eagles would have been better off if they did follow my lead. No matter the 2013 season that he had, break out Mr. Marcus Hayes. I, I just don't see it. I mean, again, you got to write these articles. you got to make yourself believe. you got to get some conversation going. you got to take the other side. I get it, but I'm not buying Riley Cooper's better than what we think. Who are we looking at this year? Jordan Matthews, stud. Nelson Aguilar, again, rookie, so we're going to have to be a little patient with his production. Josh Huff, hopefully he can stay healthy. Uh, Miles Austin is going to get some PT. And honestly, let's focus on the run game. That's where it comes from. That's what got me excited about Chip Kelly from day one, the run game. He focuses on the run. He wants to control that line of scrimmage. And, and, and that's what drives it for me with my love affair about Chip and his offensive ways. Stay away from throwing the ball 50 to 60 times, All right, which you got accustomed to doing sometimes last year. Let's focus on getting that run game going where you, you got the defense guessing. And when you have running backs like DeMarco Murray, like Sproles, hopefully Ryan Matthews can stay healthy. Hopefully the offensive line is going to be, will return to form from two years ago when Shady McCoy went over 1,600 yards. That's what we need right there, not freaking passing the football. No, 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 no. I mean, obviously the NFL is a passing league. I get that. But with Chip Kelly, that's what I love about him. He wants to run the football, control the line of scrimmage. So... Um, Riley Cooper is not going to have an, an impact this year. I think we're all on the same page there. Mark Hayes had to put an article out there. I tried to read it with you, but it's a lot of blah, blah, blah. So we're moving on. 
Um, last night, the best morning show, as far as I'm concerned, most entertaining, and I don't listen to it on radio, so it's interesting for me to put this out there and say that, but Boomer and Carton. Um, yes, it's a New York show. I get that. Yes, Craig Carton has fun at our expense here in Philly with uh, Foo Philly. Um, and at times, I, I, when the Knicks got the fourth overall pick in this year's draft, I hit him up with a Foo and Y. And that's, you know, I pay a little tribute to Craig right there. All right. Um, it is an entertaining morning show. It is. Uh, Boomer is, is miserable at times, and Craig is just nuts. But I, I, I'm entertained by them on TV. I don't know how it plays out on radio. I don't I've always asked myself how it would sound on radio. I don't know if I'd be that interested, but I wake up in the morning, I throw on Boomer and Carton, try and get up early, try and get the day going early. But last night, you got to show some love to the boys up there in New York. They had a celebrity softball game that Joe Torre played in, Tom Coughlin, Chris Christie, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, Bernie Williams. I mean, you name it, they were there playing. Eric Decker from the Jets, Rex Ryan, uh, head coach for the Bills, former Jets coach. You name it, they were there. Uh, they brought over 18,000 fans into Yankee Stadium. I believe the tickets were probably $10, $15, something like that, I want to say. Over 18,000 people showed up, and it was all donated to the NYPD, or all because of the NYPD. And uh, let me make sure I get this right. Proceeds will benefit the Silver Shield Foundation, the NYC PBA Widows and Children's Fund, and the families of more... Uh, Ramos and Lou, who were the three NYPD officers that lost their life in the uh, uh, while uh, serving this year or in the line of duty, and um, that's just amazing. Speaking from experience, when you're able to do uh, a radio show and then be able to strike up a fan base and be able to do some good, raise some money, as um, I was a part of a function that raised money for Julie Kramer. Uh, cancer survivor who is now battling cancer again. Shout out to Julie. Great, great girl. Um, it's unfortunate. Damn, I read that on Twitter the other day. She said cancer creeped back into her lungs and that's just some sad shit right there. But she's a strong girl. She's going to fight. But back to Boomer and Carton. When you're able to do that, get the fan base going, 18,000 plus pack Yankee Stadium. Um, all for the NYPD. I mean, that's just incredible. So hats off to the boys up there in New York. You finally did something good. I kid. Um, and keep it going. Don't stop there. I'm sure, you know, next year is going to be bigger and badder. And uh, once you get every, once you get that movement going, that mo going, it's unstoppable because people want to do something good with their life. And you really do feel good after paying some money, donating, whatever it is, uh, you know, volunteering, whatever it may be. You really do feel at the end, feel good at the end of those days. So shout out to those boys and girls up there in New York uh, that uh, filled Yankee Stadium and Paid respect to the NYPD. Um, moving on, from something interesting happened today, and I got it at phillyofficer.com if you want to check that out, but Dan Patrick and John Calipari got into it. It was over something weird, too. Excuse me, but the, the segment was Calipari hopped on, and I don't know what Patrick said before, but it got Calipari all riled up. And, excuse me. Something along the lines of the platooning bothered Dan Patrick. That's what I take. And he questioned John Calipari. Yes, yeah, something along the lines of, like, if you did not platoon this year, or do you regret pl platooning, getting everybody PT, uh, do you think you would have won a national championship? I mean, jeez, they, they, they went undefeated in the regular season. And it's NCAA March Madness, you know what happens there. All it takes is one, and you're gone. Um, so Cal did not like that line of questioning. But the funny thing is, and if you slide over to phillyinfluencer.com, check it out, press play on the link, you will see, or you will hear, excuse me, Dan Patrick, coach Calipari at least 15 times in the interview. Coach, 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 coach. Now, I, all, I didn't always subscribe to Mike Missanelli's theory. I did not. Um, but he was right. You, you just, you don't do, you don't coach a guy. At times, you sort of do if you want to pay respect. But Calipari coming on, it just sounded weird. Press play on that. Give me your thoughts. Hit me up on Twitter, at Sean underscore Brace. And let me know if you agree with me on that, because uh, I, it just, that was what struck me the, the oddest moment of the whole interview in the back and forth. Like, Cal Parry didn't really appreciate the line of questioning, and Dan Patrick just was like, whoa, I didn't mean to get you all defensive here, but, you know, I'm just asking that question. And I thought it was a good question, but Cal Parry, Patrick, they go back and forth. That's all over the place. That happened this morning. So check that out. That's fresh off the wire. Um, and finally, let's, let's end with, with this. I've had enough 
of fighting in baseball. You know, we always hear about hockey. You know, we want to get rid of the fights in hockey, right? Well, no more. I, I don't want to talk about fights in hockey. I want to focus on baseball fights. No more. That's it. I, 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 I've had enough of guys leaving the bench, getting in each other's faces, and nothing happening. Because that's all that happens anymore. Name the last good baseball fight. Right? When you, when you say a good baseball fight, what comes to your mind? Nolan Ryan, and Robin Ventura, all right, Daryl Strawberry swinging for the fences in the dugout. What was that, the Orioles and, and the Yanks? I mean, how many years ago was that? I'm sure I'm missing a couple good fights here and there, but come on, enough is enough. Last night, the Cubs and the Marlins, some dude hit a home run, I forget who it was, and he hot-dogged it around the bases, and he was down, I think they were down 6 nothing at the time, or 6-1, whatever it may be. And dude comes around and shushes the, the Marlins dugout as he's, you know, uh, going around third base, and they didn't like that, and obviously the bench is clear, and the bullpen. This is the worst part. Like, I wouldn't say anything, but the bullpen, they empty. I mean, you're looking at, like, a 20-minute delay. Nobody's throwing any punches. People are getting tossed out, and, and here's this is why I bring it up. Basketball. When there's a fight during an NBA game, right, and a guy leaves a bench, he's suspended for a game. It's like you got a guy specifically on your roster, a coach on your team that is the get-back guy. I know they have it in the NFL. It's the guy that wants everybody off the sideline so the ref doesn't run you over. But there's a guy specifically. That's his number one duty. If there's a fight in an NBA game, no, no, whoa, 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 everybody back. Nobody leave the bench. All right? You leave the bench in an NBA game, you're suspended automatically. Major League Baseball, these dudes come hauling ass out of the bullpen. It takes them 25 minutes. There's no punches thrown. Enough is enough. No more fighting in baseball. I'm done with it, all right? After last night, that was a joke. Somebody do something. Throw some punches already. Jeez. All right, that's uh, Philly Emphaser episode four. That's right, we're moving forward. It went a little bit longer. I'm changing some things up. A lot of good feedback. Um, some funny comments. I appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. I know that there were some people on Crossing Broad having fun at my expense. My girlfriend liked to, uh, wanted to tell me that, and she's like, oh, they're talking about you again. I'm like, oh, geez. Well, thank you for that. That means a lot. Um, you know, one guy said, you need a new table. It seems a little shaky. Yeah, you're right. It is a DJ table. I've had this bad boy for a little while. Uh, one other guy asked me if he can get a copy of the, uh, the banner right here. That's right, the 2014 Orlando Summer League Champions, baby. You think we could duplicate that success this year? I hope so. Hopefully Joel Embiid plays. I want to talk some Sixers. It's definitely going to get some Sixers talk going tomorrow after the NBA Finals Game 1. Get that in as well. Um, so again, please, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate that. Facebook, Philly Influencer. Check it out. Obviously the website, phillyinfluencer.com. And me on Twitter, at Sean underscore Brace. Last but not least, tonight I will be DJing at Pitcher's Pub. It's going down. We got Game 1. All right, we're also having a Comic-Con costume party where first place gets $300, second place gets $200, third place gets $100. If you're in a couple, you're in a relationship, you and your girl dress up, you might win $500. You never know. All right? So that's going down tonight. Comic-Con happened a couple weeks ago here in Philadelphia. We went down, passed out a bunch of flyers. Hopefully some crazy shit happens tonight. All right? I like that. I like crazy shit. Come on out. Let's get weird at Pictures Pub. Uh, I will be there from 10 p.m. tonight. It's a great time. So come on out and say what's up. Again, thank you very much for pressing play, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Peace!